So if you've been following the AI space over the past week or so, you've probably been hearing talks of an AI bubble, the viral MIT study that claimed 95% of AI pilots fail is likely the main reason for this. Along with Sam Altman's recent comments to reporters, he told The Verge, when bubbles happen, smart people get overexcited about a kernel of truth. And are we in a phase where investors as a whole are overexcited about AI? My opinion is yes. Is AI the most important thing to happen in a very long time? My opinion is also yes. So these quotes from Sam Altman, along with, again, the viral MIT study, is what caused not only a dip in the market, but a ton of headlines saying we're potentially in a bubble. Now, the thing is, if you actually read that MIT study, the claims don't really add up. For example, they define success or failure almost entirely by ROI within six months, which is a pretty narrow window. They only looked at in-house AI tools rather than third-party systems like ChatGPT, which many companies and especially employees are actually adopting. And the sources of their data were also pretty questionable. So yeah, we won't go through it all here, but the study is pure clickbait. Wes Roth, who many of you might know, he's another AI YouTuber in the space, actually made a really good breakdown on it, where he essentially debunks the MIT study entirely. If you're interested in more details about it, I definitely recommend you go watch that video. So anyways, while the headlines are screaming bubble, if you just look at the actual numbers coming in from the industry, you'll see that we are nowhere near a bubble. Yes, investment is incredibly high right now, but NVIDIA continues to smash revenue expectations. As it states here, NVIDIA reported another quarter of sustained sales growth in its earnings statement Wednesday with $46.7 billion in revenue, a 56% increase compared to the same period last year. So yeah, the company that's literally fueling the AI revolution continues to grow substantially. If we were truly in a bubble, the kind that's about to pop, you wouldn't expect NVIDIA to still be reporting record-breaking double-digit growth year over year. And it's not just NVIDIA who would refute this. David Blunden, a well-known venture capitalist and co-host of the Moonshots podcast with Peter Diamandis, also believes we are not yet in a bubble. And I thought his reasoning here was really well said. Check this out. So Dave, is there an AI bubble? There, there is definitely not a bubble. Uh, and two things. Sam, first of all, is now in full board downplay mode <laughs> because he doesn't need to hype it anymore. He's exactly where he needs to be. Uh, so he's in full board downplay mode. We've seen that before. Uh, and then there are plenty of bad investments out there, all kinds of charlatans running around raising capital, and those companies will fail, and then people will say, see, I told you it was a bubble. But that's not true. <laughs> it's the, the tailwind is like nothing we've ever seen, and everybody is now, you know, whether they know what they're doing or not, they're all kind of jumping on the ship. All the business school people are coming out of the woodwork <laughs> and, getting, <laughs> and getting involved. And so, yeah, good. there's going to be some bad investments, and then people will say, see, I was right, it was a bubble. Absolutely not a bubble. It's the biggest shift in human history. Yeah. And, and and the worst thing you can do is not get on board and, and ignore it. That's the worst move you can make. So yeah, perhaps investors are a little overexcited. And yes, there are plenty of half-baked AI startups out there. But don't lose sight of just how transformative this technology will actually be. NVIDIA's numbers are also clearly proof that the demand is still very real. And NVIDIA didn't just stop with their earnings. They also dropped some major product news this week. First, Jetson Thor, their new Blackwell-powered robotics ship. Compared to the last generation, Jetson Orin, it delivers 7.5 times more AI compute and 3.5 times better energy efficiency. In other words, it means robots can now run way bigger models for way longer using a lot less power. On top of that, NVIDIA researchers also published a paper on something called Jet Nemotron, a new family of hybrid architecture language models. Their Jet Nemotron 2B model is basically on par with models like Quen 3, Gemma 3, and Llama 3.2 on benchmarks, but is up to 53 times faster. If this holds up outside the lab, it could be a huge breakthrough for making LLMs faster, cheaper, and easier to scale. Now, while NVIDIA is raking in record sales and pushing new breakthroughs, the rest of big tech is scrambling to keep up. 
According to reports, Apple is now in talks with Google to use Gemini AI to power the next version of Siri. I feel like I say this all the time, but Apple, who has been lagging behind in the AI race, even after its OpenAI deal, seems to finally be taking this seriously. Still, nothing's confirmed yet. Meanwhile, over at Meta, they just announced a partnership with Midjourney, one of the biggest names in generative art. This is a big move for Meta's newly established Super Intelligence Labs, and will likely give them a good chance to catch up to players like Google and OpenAI, at least in terms of image and video generation. But at the same time, Wired reports that several top researchers have left Meta's brand new Super Intelligence Labs, and actually went back over to OpenAI after only a one month stint. While this might be expected after a huge restructuring like this, it's still probably worth keeping an eye on. And now, if we check in on XAI, Elon Musk tweeted they're building a purely AI software company called MacroHard. He writes, it's a tongue-in-cheek name, but the project is very real. In principle, given that software companies like Microsoft do not themselves manufacture any physical hardware, it should be possible to simulate them entirely with AI. So this is a classic Musk thing to do. Part meme, part moonshot. But what he's really pointing at here is a future where AI doesn't just help write software, it is the software, the designer, and the operator. In other words, trillion dollar companies like Microsoft and the services they provide could potentially one day be fully simulated by AI, top to bottom, which is pretty insane to think about. And speaking of Microsoft, this week they announced something pretty surprising, Vibe Voice an open-source text-to-speech model. They write, Vibe Voice is a novel framework designed for generating expressive, long-form, multi-speaker conversational audio, such as podcasts from text. As you can see here, it's leading on a human preference benchmark ahead of both 11 Labs's 11v3 and Sesame, two of the best voice models out there. Just take a listen. I can't believe you did it again. I waited for two hours, two hours, not a single call, not a text. Do you have any idea how embarrassing that was just sitting there alone? Look, I know I'm sorry. All right. Work was a complete nightmare. My boss dropped a critical deadline on me at the last minute. I didn't even have a second to breathe, let alone check my phone. So yeah, this is actually really good, like surprisingly good. I haven't seen many people talking about this, but it can even generate audio up to 90 minutes long, which is kind of insane. Now moving on, we also got Nano Banana this week, Google's new image generation model. I already made a full video covering it entirely, definitely check that out if you missed it. But this model made a lot of noise for its incredible image editing capabilities. The character consistency, accuracy, and reliability is just next level. The days of Photoshop are truly over, and it's only going to get better and better from here. And now over in the world of robotics, we got a new demo from Figure Robotics. Here is Figure's robot actually folding towels completely autonomously. This is not teleoperated, this is 100% neural net, powered by their in-house AI system Helix. They even have a human throwing a towel in every now and then to not only distract the humanoid, but also to simulate a potential real-world scenario. As you can see, the robot is completely unbothered. It simply pushes the towels aside and continues on with its task. I give it 5 more years max until these things are actually in homes. And finally, last but not least, OpenAI announced a new partnership with Retro Biosciences, a longevity biotech startup to accelerate breakthroughs in life sciences. As they write here, together with Retro Biosciences, we built a specialized version of GPT-40 called GPT-4B Micro. Using it, they designed new versions of the Yamanaka factors, the Nobel Prize winning proteins behind stem cell reprogramming and cellular rejuvenation. And get this, in lab tests, these AI designed proteins showed over 50 times higher activity than natural versions with stronger DNA repair and rejuvenation potential. And the results held up across different donors, cell types, and delivery methods. So this is actually pretty crazy. AI is already starting to accelerate longevity research. And keep in mind, this is only GPT-40, well, a specialized version of it. As these models get better in general, and also more agentic, we can expect to see more and more of this, 
which is super exciting. This is the kind of stuff that doesn't get much attention right away, but that will have a huge impact down the line. Anyways, that's all the AI news for the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. If you did, please feel free to drop a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.